Well, hello guys, I am Mr. G and this time is going to be, uh, we're going to start with the lessons for the grey 11 in 2023. We're going to start with uh, vectors, this is going to be the first lesson of vectors. We're planning to do all the lessons, not exactly in the same order as you do it at school, but we're going to be following an um, accurate way of, uh, of vectors and more or less what you do it at school. And we're planning also to do an experiment uh, to see how to add vectors when they are not along the lines of x-axis and y-axis or along the, the Cartesian plane, okay? So we're going to start with resultant of perpendicular vectors but the first thing we're going to do is to recall what you learned from previous grade about vectors and perhaps we can stop it right there because I don't want to make videos too long, okay? So now the first thing you learn is that the physical quantities can be divided into vectors and scale. All right, so physical quantities can be divided into vectors and scales. All physical quantities that you have can be divided in one of those two groups. Okay, now what are the scalars? And we're going to start with the scalars. Yeah? The scalars are the physical quantities that has, they has only magnitude. Only magnitude. All right, examples are a time, temperature, distance, speed, speed, Len, those are some examples, mass, some example of a, a scalar quantities. All right, so that is the first thing. We do, it was done in previous grades, now we have to work with that. Now let's go to the vectors, which is the main purpose of this topic. Now, what are vectors? Vectors are physical quantities that they don't only have magnitude, they have magnitude and they have direction. And they follow certain rule when you have to add them. They, you don't add vectors like you add, for instance, scalars. They have their own ways of being added, all right? So vectors are physical quantities, we have mentioned them on top and I'm going to repeat, that has, they has both. They have magnitude, It has magnitude and they have direction. They have magnitude and they have a direction. Now, some examples of vectors is the first I'm going to mention is force. Why? Because it's the first one we practice in grade 10. So you learn about forces there. Then we have velocity for instance. I'm writing the symbol. You can write the word if you are taking notes, which I recommend you to take some uh, notes. For example, displacement. All these are physical quantities you done previously in grade, um, in grade 10. Or previous case okay so this is a vector quantity this is some example there are many more but i don't have to mention all of them now we're going to focus on vectors okay remember that or not vectors have a specific way to be represented so the symbol for vectors the symbols for vectors are different symbols all around it depends what book are you using but the one we are going to follow here in these videos, as well as uh, the schools, most of them, are going to be the letter of the symbol with an arrow on top pointing to the right. So this means that this physical quantity is a vector. For example, for example, force is a vector. That's correct. So we say that force is being represented with the symbol F and a small arrow on top. For example, velocity is a vector quantity, is a V with a arrow on top. For example, displacement is an, a delta X with an arrow on top. And another example, acceleration is an arrow with a 
he said, he said A with an arrow on top. This means that this physical quantity, all of them are vectors. Now, in other books, you can find that vectors are represented with bold letter. But here we are not going to do it like that. But please have in mind, if you perhaps going to study from other book, then you may find that. Now, if we have, for example, for example, we have force and you are represented force like just the F without the arrow on top, it means that you are being referred to the magnitude. Magnitude of the force. In this case, no direction because we are referring to the magnitude only. So please, that is important things to have in mind. If you write the symbol without the arrow on top, it means that is the magnitude of that specific physical quantity. This is not new, guys. This was done in previous grade. So let's continue now. Let's, let's see how do we represent graphically vectors. Now, vectors are going to be represented graphically with an arrow. This is a vector. It's a graphically representation of a vector in which the head of that arrow, this side here, will indicate the direction of the vector and the length, the length of the vector, of the length of the arrow from the point of the head to the tail is going to represent the magnitude, the magnitude of the vector. magnitude of the vector. Remember, this side here is called the tail of that vector. So the length from the tail to the point of the head of the vector is going to represent the a magnitude of that specific vector. All right. Now, when you represent graphically, you need to use a scale. For example, for example, let's say you have to represent the vector f equal to a 3 newton to the right. You have to represent graphically three newtons to the right. So when you do that, the first thing you need to do is to select the scale. So the first step is scale, All right? And the scale for this one, for example, we're going to say that one newton is going to be equal to a one centimeter. Therefore, therefore three newton will be equal to three centimeters. And then when you get your ruler, you are going to represent three centimeters. For example, there is one centimeter. There is one centimeter. There is another centimeter. And there is another centimeter, but you have to draw it only one line, all right? So, for example, this is the vector that we have to represent if you don't add the head of the vector then the vector is wrong and this one is f f equal to 3 newton in this case you can write to the right but you can see the direction also with the head of the arrow that is the vector 3 newton which represents 3 newton to the right but you don't draw 3 newton you draw three centimeters or whatever scale you work, okay? So this is important, this was done in previous grade. You also learn equality of vectors in grade 10, and you learn that two vectors are equal when they have the same magnitude and the same direction, all right? For example, this vector here is going to be vector one or F1, for example. Let's call this one F1. And F1 will be equal to F2 if F2 will have the same magnitude and the same direction. For example, this vector F1 will be equal to this other vector F2 because they have the same the same direction represented by the head of, the, of each of the vectors and the same length in starting from the tail to the head. So we can say then that in this case, F1 will be equal to 
F2. And this is important, all right? So that is very, very important that two vectors may be equal. Now, what else you learn? You learn the direction. We learn to give direction to vectors. And we use three main type of, of the three different ways of giving direction. And those were a relative direction, that is when we say up, down, right, or left. We use the compass, and that is when you say, for instance, um, north, south, east, and we use the bearing, which have a specific way of representing. This one was done in previous grade, so I am not going to repeat that one. And then we also learn about a negative vector, and this is a very important definition or concept. So, a negative vector is a vector that is pointing in the opposite direction to the one taken as positive. For example, if we say that right is going to be positive, any vector that is going to be pointing to the left will be negative. If you decided that north is positive, any vector that is pointing to the south is going to be negative and so on. It's a vector that is pointing in exactly the opposite direction as the one taken as positive. So, to finish this one, we're going to uh, recall what is a resultant vector and how to add vectors real fast. And this is one of the most important definitions you're going to do for the whole year, which is a resultant vector. Now, what is resultant vector? It's a single vector having the same effect as all other vectors acting together. In other words, it's the addition of all the vectors. The symbol for resultant vector is, um, could be FR, capital R, like this, that is for resultant vector, or could also be net force, if it's a force. But remember, we're talking in general as vector. So it could be resultant displacement, resultant uh, velocity, and so on. However, you are going to work most of the time with forces. And this is the symbol we're going to use for resultant forces, okay? Or most of the symbols. Now, now we're going to recall how to add vectors. And vectors can be added either algebraically or it can be added graphically. Now, algebraically, you just add vectors but respectfully in terms of direction. You have to keep the direction correct, okay? For example, let's say we have two vectors. For instance, we have two vectors, F1, we're going to keep using forces, F1 that is going to be 100 Newton and is going to be to the right, all right? And we have an F2, which is going to be equal to 70 Newton and it's also going to be to the right. So what will the resultant force be? Algebraically, eh? we have to edit algebraically. Now, when you do that one, you always select the direction that is going to be taken as positive, and that is a very important thing. So we're going to say right is going to be positive. So all the vectors that are pointing to the right are positive, and all the vectors that are pointing to the left are negative. In this case, both of them are pointing to the right. So algebraically in addition, we say that the resultant force is going to be um, equal to 100 Newton plus 70 Newton. And I'm not going to substitute the unit, I was going to. So the resultant force is going to be equal to 170 Newton to the right. This is the answer of this calculation algebraically uh, calculated, okay? Now, if we want to do it graphically, we need to represent the vectors using the scale. So, in this case, in this case, we're going to say that 10 Newton is going to be equivalent to 1 centimeter, for example. So, if we do this one as the scale, the first vector, this one will be uh, 10 centimeters, and the second one will be uh, seven centimeters. So this is important to know and therefore we represent both vectors. All right, so for example, we have in 100 newtons and 70 newtons. The scale was 10 newtons to one centimeter. So if you notice, I use each of the square for this uh, book to be one centimeter. You must use your ruler properly, okay? So what is the method we're going to use? It is called head to tail method. 
which means you use any vector and you place it right on the uh, head of that vector you are going to place the tail of the next vector for example we have here the 100 newton so right here on the head of the 100 newton we are going to place the tail of the 70 newton let's see how will that quickly be you take that vector and you take it all the way and you place it right there on the head of the first vector so where is the resultant going to be it's going to be from the tail of the first vector you draw to the head of the last vector you draw and so the resultant is a vector that is going from the tail of the first vector to the head of the last vector you draw also have a head obviously I, I, all the vectors and this is the resultant vector which is equal to you count or you measure with your ruler you count the square and that will give you 170 newton here is how to draw or how to represent this vector graphically i hope you understand that part now let's see when vectors are not pointing on the same direction now for example we are going to have f1 still equal to 100 newton to the right but we have f2 which is 70 newton but not to the right instead it's going to be to the left so you still have to get the resultant force okay first of all we select the direction that is going to be a positive so let's say right is positive and you must always write it it is very important to write it there so you can see it so that means that the 100 is positive but the 70 is negative and then instead of just doing that i'm going to erase this one and i'm going to write the positive at the front and the negative at the front like that but note i did take away the direction in terms of wedding okay so how did you calculate the resultant force algebraically you say that the resultant force um, fr is equal to 100 minus 70 newton which is equal to 30 30 newton the answer is a positive answer and positive mean to the right so the final answer is that the resultant force is equal to 30 newton to the right this is how to calculate this using algebraically method but if instead of this one you have to do it graphically we have to do the same we want to use the same scale as before we are going to say that uh, 10 newton will be equal to one centimeter and therefore this one is going to be 10 centimeters and this one is seven centimeters okay so if you draw the vectors you have for instance and here are the vectors now what how are you going to uh, you're going to place any vector before so you're going to place the vector and right on the head of that vector you're going to place the tail of the other vector so we're going to take this vector here the 70 and we're going to pull it all the way to place it right on the head of the first vector there is the head of the, the the head of the first vector so now where is going to be the resultant the resultant is going to be from the tail of the first vector you draw to the head of the last vector you have there so the resultant is a vector that is going from the tail of the first one to the head of the last one you can see it here and that is the resultant so fr is going to be you count the square one two three which is equal to 13 newton according to the conversion and this is how to draw or how to add vectors uh, graphically so guys this is going to be the first video i don't want to make videos too long this is not grade 11 yet this is everything here is for grade uh, 10 however you're going to use it now is like a summary next time when the we are going to uh, definitely this part that is the subtitle which is related to the, the gray 11 work but thank you for watching mr g here i'll see you next time thumb up subscribe thank you